Okay, we're a little bit further down the pike at this point. Uh, the main issue is to be able to send things between classes, you have to basically get it actors of all that, of, of the class and a bunch of that stuff. But let me show you a little prep work here. So what we've basically done is we started working this out a little bit. What we've done is we've created ourselves two variables, which you cannot see because once again, my picture is on the other side of the thing. Um, hang on, I'm gonna try and dump this into the detail side. Okay, no, that's really bad. Yes, there we go. And maybe we can see the details here. Yes, we can. Okay. So over here on the right hand side, we have horizontal value and vertical value, two floats. And I dragged them out here and I basically am setting them. So that's the set there for that one and the set there for that one. So now we have two variables that we will then go into the other thing. So basically at this point, we don't actually need to send an event. All we need to do is access a parameter, which we did want to make public. It's sort of slightly cut off here by the thing. Uh, it's right here. When you click that little uh, icon, you know, that, that makes this, this uh, variable public and basically then it can be altered and, you know, dealt with by other things essentially. So that's what I am doing in this particular case. The horizontal value and the vertical value are being stored um, right here by the set value. So every time they change, they're gonna be set every single time. And that means then we can go get those values um, here in this graph, in the Benjolin test for the blueprint, all right? And then once we do that, we should be able to do this correctly. So we'll see what happens. So it's gonna be get all actors of class. And the class we want to select is going to be the mouse controller because every object that you made is visible here, plus a bunch of just general things as well. So we are getting uh, that, which probably means we want to do this most likely, and then do the set float parameter eventually. Mouse controller goes out actors. Uh, which we have to get, uh, just get, just a general get, not player pawn or any of this other kind of stuff, just plain old get, or get in a member or whatever like that. Oh, get actors? Maybe get actors. Get actor. Get actors perception. Oh. That's not really that. I could say get all actors a class, but that's the same thing I just did. Get actors to copy, that's what it is. Nope, that's not it. Uh, get a copy. Come on. Get a copy. Yeah, that's it. So then you get the out actors and you find them basically it's going to be the, there's only one mouse control object it's not like we have a bunch of them and then what we can do is we can set variables from there if we're looking for them i think uh i'm going to create a variable the idea that i've been told is that if you create a variable let's go over here we can basically pick a type of that variable, which is essentially mouse controller, like the same as we already have. So we can basically go this huge long list and actually do any amount of things we want here. So we can call this mouse controller, which is our typical thing that we had, and have our object re reference. And there's all these different things that we can have on it, but we don't care about that so much. But we have now an object reference that says new variable. We're gonna call this um, mouse control. It's mouse control. All right, so then we go basically here. Now we have 
a variable we can drag and use as our node kind of thing. So I believe if we can go here and drag our variable here, and that will be a set mouse controller, because that is the variable of mouse control. So we are doing that. So let's go do that. That's gonna break the it's gonna break the thing there, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that and we'll fit it. We'll, we'll put that into set float, float parameter soon enough. So our main problem to go back over everything as before is that we wanted to control our blueprint or our uh, meta sounds, right? From a blueprint. And the only way we could do that was to have a reference to the audio component, which is the only, the only place the audio component is on is on the main level blueprint not on the actor blueprint for the mouse controller, which is doing all of the manipulating of the object, right? So then what happens is we have to get the information from the mouse controller in order to be able to plug it into this set float parameter uh, function up here. We can get the target, the audio component, all that other wonderful stuff. We can set the input name to our oscillator frequency input, you know, that we've already done. All of that's working fine, but we can't get anywhere without actually pulling the data from our mouse controller type effectively. So we, what we do is we put this node here called uh, get all actors of class, which is off in the way, okay. So get all actors of class. We drag it out and get a copy of the array. We find the ob first object in the array, which is there's only one actor in the class, right? We set that object and we bring that back over to here to the get uh, thing so that the mouse control is basically getting that mouse value, putting it into here. We set that mouse control. We have created a separate variable of the type of mouse controller as a variable in this blueprint. So in other words, we've created a blank holder for the mouse controller variable now that we, so an instance basically, we've got an instance now. So we've got an instance of the mouse controller variable and now we can get a variable from there. In this case, the horizontal value. I can also do the same thing for the vertical value um, pretty easily, factually. Uh, can I do two? That'd be nice. Let's see if I can do that. See, vert, vert value. Vert value. Get vert value. Cool. So we got the mouse control to horizontal value, vert value. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing here. We'll set another parameter for that. But let's, we haven't got the LFO. We're just going to stop with controlling our, our oscillator because it was complex enough just to get this working. Uh, I don't know if it will work. I'm, I've, I'm completely, it might totally not work at all. So let's just uh, cross our fingers and hope that we, uh, we've got something here and we can do things. Uh, cause this is by, this is, believe it or not, this is the easy part. <laughs> the hard part is going to be trying to figure out how to get a shift register to work inside, um, uh, unreal, uh, meta sounds. Okay. Anyway, so we're there, we're saving things. Make sure we save all our bits and pieces. Okay. Let's hope this works. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to find out. So here's our Benjolin test, and we will see what happens. Come on, buddy. Are you... Okay, it's a really moving very, very slowly, but it is sort of moving. Okay, so... I think the reason why is because, boy, is it weird? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's sort of there. Okay, so what happens is, yeah, okay. I know why it's doing what it's doing, I think. Um, <laughs> so what the deal I believe is, is on our Benjolin test, we're, okay, so what happens is we're only updating this value currently uh, when we grab things, because that's what we actually had it hooked up to was this event. So let's not do get mesh, because get mesh is not gonna be continuous, no matter what. So let's not do that. We will not use 
we'll use get mesh for this thing because that's fine, but we're not going to use it for being able to set our horizontal and vertical values. We will disconnect connect this, break this link, and we will instead put in event tick if it's not already here. Oh yeah, there it is. So there is the branch, blah, 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 set. Okay, yeah, so that's the event tick. It's already goes going into like the print statement. So yeah, actually the thing we wanted to do was do the print string, actually. All right, so let's try that now. That so this is this is this is a good sign. This is a very good sign. I think we're we're actually pretty close. So let's just see what happens now. Except we're not moving anything. We're just still. I'm not sure why the. <laughs> it sort of works, <laughs> um, but it's in a weird way, and I'm still not quite sure why, but it is it is working in a certain way. Um, I'll show you what's going on. It's there, and it's, re re it's reacting to everything that I want, but it is not moving. It's not moving our guy which is a bit weird because it was moving our guy perfectly fine before. It was picking up our guy and moving him. So I may have changed something on the mouse controller that I'm not aware of. I'm going to disable the the uh, everything I have here, uh, pass print string, um, break that link, and maybe not even do the vertical value and the horizontal value change for now. Yeah, I just want to disconnect all that stuff, stuff and see if it still moves around the way that it's supposed to from before. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Because it was moving perfectly smoothly before, and that's the thing that I don't quite understand what the heck is going on in that case. Benjamin test. All right, so here we go. Come on, buddy. Yeah, it's definitely not moving correctly. So I must have changed something that I'm not aware of with the mouse controller because it is only updating on world location and not continuously. So I suppose we could just do this and not be, well the problem is we have to do get mesh which is a custom event. It no longer wants to update the values as smoothly as it was before. It might be because of the screen recording, possibly. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to leave this alone for now, and we will see you in the next one, all right? Take care. Bye.